first off, the first week, I'm like, how did I ever get here? How did I get to this place? And if you go to one of those facilities, like these people don't know what they're talking about, but I got the tools that I needed and have used them ever since. So I thought I would keep that in the closet and never reveal that secret. But now that I've been out, now that I've been sober uh, this period of time, and I talk about it with people at parties, like you're probably the same. You, you go to a, a party with friends and at least one of them before the end of the night will come over and say, so, uh, so what's it like? Like you're trying to sell them on a new religion yeah. or something. Uh -huh. Like, so, uh -huh. so is it, yeah, is it, is it good? And, and I don't want to be too, I don't want to be too exuberant because I'm like, it's amazing. It's the best. So I said, I need to bring that and just put that in the light in the, uh, in the podcast. And since then I have had so many people reach out and say, Dan, you telling your story showed me that, that it's possible and it's something I need to do. And they'll reach out and they'll say, I haven't had a, a joint in 15 days, or I'm like, I haven't had a drink in seven days. And I, and I say, that is awesome. That is unreal. Just wait until you go further and further into this and the clarity gets even better than you realize how, how our minds tricked each uh, tricked us into, no, you need this to have fun. Because that was the one thing yeah. Uh, yeah. going into rehab. I talked to a buddy. I'm like, I'm never going to have fun again. And he got me on the phone with someone who had just left rehab three months prior. And he said, Dan, I said the same things. And I could not have been more wrong in my life. So I always remember that. And I mention that to people when they reach out, I say, our minds trick us into thinking, no, nah, no, nah, you need booze to have fun when it's just clouding you from reality and not living in the moment. And when you, you find that clarity, you are so present and it's just, it's, it's a game changer. This disease lies to us, and that's why, for whatever reason, it's a disease that wants me dead or insane and won't stop till I get there. And it yep. lied and lied and lied. And I would quit daily, and I'd end up my car would end up at the bar, and I'd go, "How did that happen?" I used to blame the car; I had a mind of its own, like Christine, right? Or, or you but, uh, reward uh, yourself. You're like, "Well, I haven't drank yeah. in five days," and then you have yeah. to reward yourself with a three day bender. <laughs> well, me it was five hours, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, you talk about not the, the disease telling me it's not, it's not going to be any fun. And my life is over as I know it fun as I know is over. And that was the, the stuff that was going through my end, through my mind. But you know, what I learned was, you know, I've learned what fun is and I've learned to enjoy it. And, you know, when I have really good times, I remember it and I remember exactly yes. what was going on. And you develop, you develop you know, relationships with other human beings that are deep and meaningful and have, and, and, and are, are awesome. So there's so and much. You know but what I else I, we, I found? I, yeah. And I, and I always point mm -hmm. this out. Um, weed and alcohol have a great marketing department because for all of our lives and in every movie and every show, it's, oh, you had a tough day. Here, have a drink. Oh, yeah. you want to relax here, have a joint. When I eliminated those things from my life, and I found out they were causing 99% of all my anxiety. Mm -hmm. They weren't taking away stress. They were adding stress. So I, I don't know how I believed the, the marketing campaigns that long, but yeah, I soon discovered it. I'm like, wait a second. That didn't take away my anxiety. It gave me anxiety. Well, for some people it's okay, but for me, it's not. It's like, uh, uh, there was a, my kids went, went to, to counseling many, many years ago and, and somebody explained it to them like this with most people, they're like this. And when they drink or use drugs, they're like this, an alcoholic or ad addict is like this. And when they drink or use drugs, they're like this. So I believe that I needed it, this to exist. I needed this to function and I needed this to have fun and yada, 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 yada. And having been sober for 29 years, I can tell you the exact opposite is true. And uh, uh, in life, I didn't know how to live until I got this. And everything about my personality that's allowed me to be the best I can be, I believe, has, has improved as a result of, of and, being so. And not to one, mention, one Joe, time. so 390 days sober now and uh, sitting with a buddy the other day. And he's like, well, how much do you think he's saved? So I, I totaled it up and like I went like low estimate. 
that should be the other thing. You save a, sh a crap load of money. Oh my goodness. I'm, I had to get the calculator out a couple times. I'm like, this can't be right. And this guy's an accountant. He's like, nope, that's the right figure. It was just, I'm like, wow. So that alone, you, you want to save for retirement. Stop drinking.